Okay, it's great to meet you, Ella. What an exciting job you have on uh, McLaren's incredible supercars. Uh, there must be so many things to, to love about that. What do you love most about your job? Oh, it's such a tricky question. Um, I absolutely adore my job. And I think it's very easy for engineers to say that they love fixing things or coming up with solutions. It's quite a, a cliche thing for a scientist or an engineer to say, but of course I absolutely adore that aspect of my job. But for me, I think it's got to be the performance element of it. So yes, I adore coming up with solutions, but it, the thing that gets me absolutely excited is coming up with a solution that can shave off two kilos off of already the world's lightest supercar. And I think for me, that's what makes it so exciting. We also have um, fantastic opportunities of getting cars around tracks. And if I have that opportunity to contribute towards the world's fastest lap around the Top Gear test track, for example, or being able to contribute to something a bit bigger than just a function and solving a problem. It's just, it's so awesome. <laughs> that sounds like you're really competitive as well. There's that element of competition in it as well, isn't it? Growing up for me, I, I loved sort of being a part of a team, but I was such a sportswoman. Like I loved um, being part of a, a, something bigger than just your immediate team and you're contributing towards like getting a result or watching a lap and things like that. And so McLaren's kind of trickled into my life as a, as a sporting team would as well. Is that, did that influence you to, to get into engineering in the first place? I wanted to sort of, yeah, contribute towards something that was going to get that competitiveness forward. And yeah, F1 as well, being so closely linked to F1 team, there's quite a few parallels that you can draw between uh, engineering teams and sports teams and working together like that and I think that probably did lead me towards that that route. During our uh, 150th anniversary year we're, we're celebrating difference makers um, and you know trying to shine a light on difference makers from from across the world as well which is brilliant and you know super exciting. Um, is there a difference maker that really inspired you either in your job now or maybe when you were growing up? It's a good question and it's something that I think when I do these STEM talks and I go to schools, like a lot of students do pick up on the sense that who was your role model? Who would you look towards in, in your industry and things? There and one of the main difference makers that I loved and was a big key to me going to Manchester was Alan Turing. Mm. So I absolutely, of course, what he did for modern day technology, the way he's advanced computers and everything that we have electronic wise um, that he's done today is incredible. But I think also his personal story, um, battling with what his beliefs were and, and what his journey was, but still completed what he loved. And that's such an important thing for me. And I think girls getting into science, girls getting into engineering, we do come across a particular sort of kink in our journey that would make us think oh am I suited to this or there aren't many people out there who are relatable to me for example um it should I still follow this passion and he did it anyway and he just did something amazing and uh, I think he is an underappreciated hero so I absolutely adored him yeah do you think it's important that the sort of next generation does see people who are relatable to them Absolutely. And I think we should continue all that incredibly important work of getting people to highlight those positions. I've been fortunate in the sense that I have been involved with like Harper Collins fictional novels and rewriting stories about getting girls um, in dressing up boxes and going on a magical adventure into, into what it's like to be an engineer. And absolutely, we should highlight and showcase that. But I do think we should also broadcast the fact that it doesn't matter if you want to be um, an engineer on an offshore oil rig and you don't see many girls doing that because you've got to aim for it anyway. If that's your passion, you should do it. And I, I think we've got to be careful in the sense that um, we shouldn't wait for a relatable figure to come and occupy that before we uh, before we aspire to do it. So that's what I what I say. And to be honest, I wouldn't be where I am today if I wanted to look for someone in that particular type of position. Growing up, if you want to work with cars, people would be like, "Oh, Ella, that's not you. 
you wouldn't I don't think I can see you in a boiler suit or with a spanner and I'm like actually I don't think I can either (laughs) and it makes you question it so you just got to aim for the stars anyway is that what you'd say to someone um who was maybe thinking about a, a career in STEM then I think if someone was interested in getting into STEM I would say if you want to make a difference if you want to change the world it sounds cheesy but I think it's so that the way that the world is moving there are so many opportunities in STEM subjects and like I said there is so everyone could have a job in a STEM related subject it's, it shouldn't be painted with the brush of having a stigma that it's just simply for numbers people or people who think logically um, one of the things that I chat about in my video is that creative thinking as an engineer and artistic thinking is actually just as important as the the logical mindset of problem solving and stuff like that so I would say make sure you do your research because there are so many different branches of STEM related subjects that you can get into um, and make sure that you're aware of them all and you'll definitely find one that that you're passionate about and then secondly to cheesily aim for the stars because STEM can open up a lot of opportunities for you and I think you know, the, the Young Women Engineer of the Year is a perfect example of that. It's um, it's not just fixing things, it's uh, broadcasting to the world and changing the world as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Oh, listen, thank you so much, Ella. It's been a pleasure, an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Um, many congratulations for, uh, for becoming a, a YWE finalist and best of luck as well. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you.